Do you know what shirt this is? Passion Overdrive 2012. Um, and so uh, we don't have many of these t-shirts left. If you want to be a couple with me, then you need to get one of these t-shirts and we'll have a couple tea. Uh, and we can walk around Gangnam together. And people are going to say, what is that kid doing with that 40-year-old man uh, wearing a couple tea? Uh, but it'll be interesting, right? So if you want one of these, you know, summertime's coming. We're going to wear short sleeves anyways. Um, and the, the black gives you a slimming effect, as you can see. Uh, so you can get one. We only have like 10. Um, so it's in the back of the room. Afterwards, if you want one, you can uh, buy one, okay? Just go to the back of the room. Passion Overdrive. Last night's event was fantabulous. Uh, it was so wonderkular. <laughs> Wonderful, spectacular. Wonder See, you guys don't have the creativity that I have. So you don't understand. But it's okay. When you get to be my age, maybe uh, God will bless you. And, and you'll be able to say the words that I say. Um, but it was really great because... There were so many kids. How many of you were there yesterday? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Awesome. There's like 20 of you. Fantastic. It was great because it was a bunch of STEM kids and then a bunch of kids from Onuri and Chiguchon and Hallelujah and, and, uh, and Jubilee Church and also kids from like ch churches in other places, the U.S. military base, churches from like all these different places and kids from all these different schools came together, there were like a bunch of white kids in this room. Like, like white kids. Not, you know, like, wow, it was great to see all these kids together uh, worshiping God and a bunch of teachers were here, a bunch of pastors were here. Um, for a lot of pastors, Saturdays are their busiest days. You know why? Because they haven't prepared their sermon yet. But not me. Saturdays are my free days, right? Uh, but anyway, they're so busy. And yet they came uh, to, to church and we, we had a, a wonderful time together. Pastor Doug gave a, um, a sermon on uh, acceptance, how God accepts everybody. And that was fantastic. Um, and there was a guy named DJ Rex. Uh, and he was like, he was doing all this stuff, and, and, but it wasn't like, hey, look at me, I'm bad, I'm cool, I'm a DJ. It wasn't like that, but it was about, hey, uh, you know, we, we, we have to be used by God. God uh, uses not big things, God doesn't use uh, great things, God doesn't use fancy things, God uses clean things, right? And so when we are cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ, that God could really use us. I mean, he was saying that in Korean, and then um, Rebecca was trying to... to uh, uh, she did a great job of interpreting. I mean, it was her first time, I think, doing it, and she did a fantastic job. So yesterday was awesome. The next big H3 event, this network that we have, is going to be the summer retreat. It's this summer. It's in August, and it's going to be, uh, you know, great. It's going to be wonderful this summer, so I look forward to that. Oh, by the way... We're going to have a picnic, just us. Us. You know, one of the central themes of the gospel, one of the most important things, that, one of the most important truths that we can ever understand is the truth, the fact that God loves us so much. Do you guys even know what that love feels like? It's so amazing, as Pastor Doug shared last night, how God accepts us just the way I am. You know, in this world, we're going to try so many things to impress people, to receive love from people, to be accepted by people. We're going to do lots of things. We're going to try to be smart, try to be friendly, try to be a good basketball player, try to speak English really well, try to obey our parents. Try, we're going to try lots of different things, try to be a good Christian, you know, to be a holy person, to be accepted by the circles that we want to be a part of. But God, regardless of any of that stuff that we try, God loves us just like this. God loves us so much. And that is so, oh, man. It's so awesome. It's so amazing. But here's the thing. There has to be some kind of a response to God's love for us. We can't just say, oh, 
God loves me. I love God. And this is such a wonderful relationship because God accepts me. And I don't have to do anything. And God accepts me. That's absolutely true. But there has to be some kind of a response. In a love relationship, there is a response. Okay? We can't just say, oh, God loves me and, and, and I love God and I'm so happy and I'm just warm inside all the time because God loves me. And today's passage in the Bible is a passage that a lot of people don't want to read. It's a passage that a lot of people want to ignore because they just want the fact that God loves me so much and that's it. And so God loves me, God accepts me, and so that's it. And so I'm just going to live my life knowing that I'm accepted by God. But there's a a key part in the the part that we read today. Uh, Look at verse 5, 1 John 2, verse 5. It says this, But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. You guys, yeah, God loves us. That's, that's a fact. Nobody can change this, you know? No matter how many people say bad things about you, no matter how, how many faults you have, how many things you do wrong, how many mistakes you make, how many times you, you, you sin or, 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 you know, it doesn't matter. God loves us, okay? So, so that's not going to change. But the Bible talks about God's love being made complete in us. Why is it? That even though in our heads we know that God loves us, why is it that life is so difficult? Why is it that the Bible says that God will give us strength to overcome whatever circumstances we have, whatever hardships we have, God is going to give us strength to overcome those things, and yet we don't experience that strength. Why do we always commit the same sin over and over again? If God loves me so much, and if he's the creator of the universe, and he loves me, why do I feel lonely sometimes? And why do I look for acceptance from other people still? It's because we are not responding to God's love. It's because we're not responding to the love that God has for us. We're just saying, I'm satisfied with the fact that God loves me. I'm just going to believe this, and this is going to carry me throughout my life. But that's not what happens. You can't just, oh, okay, God loves me, and okay, God loves me. And just, you can't just continue to live your life the way you live your life. I mean, look what it says in verse 1. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. And that seems, whoa, whoa. So that I will not sin? That means if I read 1 John, if I read the letters of John, then I'm not going to sin anymore? We think that's impossible. That can't happen. I'm an imperfect human being. And there are so many temptations around me. How can I not sin? But John says, I write this to you so that you will not sin. This is our goal. This is what we're striving for. We're not doing it so that God will accept us. We're not doing it because then we'll be saved or God will be impressed. That's not why we're doing it. We're doing it because this is what God wants. This is what God desires. You guys understand? But then John says this, just just in case you think, oh man, I'm not perfect, then then God's not going to be happy and I can't go to heaven. It says, but if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and the sins of the whole world. So, you know, don't think, oh, I committed sin yesterday. You know, yesterday after Passion Overdrive, I was so blessed. But then instead of going straight home, I hung out at Gangnam late at night. Did any of you guys do that? You know, the worst thing to do after a wonderful worship service after being blessed by God, after just worshiping God with all that you are and pouring out yourself to Him, the worst thing to do is hang out at Gangnam afterwards. Because all those blessings just fly away. All the, the oh man, Gangnam, the, the cesspool of sin, right? especially at night on a weekend. Why is our church situated here? I, oh. To be the light of the world, man. That's why. So even when we do sin, we know that Jesus 
died for our sins to forgive us. But that doesn't mean that we just say, oh, God loves me, Jesus loves me, Jesus died on the cross for me, and so I'm just satisfied with that, and I'm just happy with that. Because then we're ignoring this entire part of the Bible that says, for example, in verse 3, we know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Jesus loves me. God loves me. I know him. God accepts me. But if we don't do what God commands, we're a liar. We don't know God. See, the reason why God's love has no effect on our lives is because we don't respond with obedience. You can't just bombard yourself with God loves you, God loves you, Jesus loves you, God loves you, God loves you. It doesn't do anything because we don't have a relationship with him. But when we obey his commands, that's when our relationship starts to grow. And that's when, as it says in verse 5, God's love is truly made complete in us. That's just introduction to my sermon. Oh, man, you mean there's more? Yeah, there's more. Okay? You guys, why do we not obey God's command? Now, I'm going to be really practical today. Okay? So this is theory. We know in our heads, okay, God loves me, and so I have to respond, and my response is obedience. That's great. Why do we not obey? If we know it in our heads, why do we not do it? You know, today's uh, sermon title is Identify with Christ. Right? Identify with Christ. And I think that's one of the biggest reasons why we don't obey God's command. It's because we don't identify with Christ. That means we don't tell the world that I am a Christian, that I am a son of God, that I'm a daughter of God, that I'm a child of God, that I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. We don't let anybody know. We never identify with Christ. So does this mean that everywhere you go, you're supposed to say, I'm a Christian? So like you're, you know, waiting for the bus and there's a guy, you know, waiting for the bus with you and you say, hey, by the way, I'm a Christian. I'm identifying with Christ right now. You know, is that what I'm saying we have to do? No. But what, I'm, what I am saying is whenever we have opportunity, we need to identify with Christ. What was Peter's huge mistake when Jesus was being crucified, when Jesus was being tried? What was Peter's huge mistake? It was not identifying with Christ. When people came to him and said, hey, aren't you a Galilean? Aren't you a Christian? Aren't you one of those people that followed Jesus? Peter distanced himself. He refused to identify with Christ. He said, I don't know who he is. But here's the thing, you guys. In our life, it might not be that dramatic, but we do the same thing. We refuse to identify ourselves with Christ. And because of that, there's zero incentive in ourselves to obey Him. Yeah, sometimes we, we remember God's Word, and sometimes we remember we're a Christian, and so uh, in a certain given situation, we might obey Him. We might be nice to somebody. We might forgive somebody. We might, you know, think good thoughts about somebody. We might, you know, help somebody. We might give some money to charity. We might do that but it's only at certain given situations, it's not who we really are. Those events become exceptions to who we actually are. So if we have 24 hours, we spend how many hours sleeping? Six? Seven? Okay, that's because you're an adult. Kids, you, you guys sleep like three hours, right? In America, they sleep eight or nine. You guys only sleep three hours. So three hours of your life uh, is spent on sleeping, in your 24 hours, and then you spend uh, about three hours on the computer, right, doing, like, stuff, and then you, you spend uh, three hours a day eating, and then you spend uh, about five or six hours a day sleeping in class, and then you go to Hagwon, and then you, you spend another three or four hours actually studying, and then what? When are you identifying with Christ? Well, while I'm doing the whole thing, I'm a Christian. Really? How are you any different from someone who's not a Christian during those hours? You guys, in our daily life, I'm sorry, we almost never identify with Christ. Almost never. Nobody ever challenges us to identify with Christ. 
See, when Peter was denying Jesus, he denied Jesus because he was being challenged. Somebody said, aren't you a follower of Jesus? And so it, at that moment, he, he had a choice. Do I identify with Christ or not? And he chose not to. But in our daily lives, we're so good at avoiding the situation that we're never challenged to identify with Christ. And because we, we don't identify with Christ, there's no obedience and we say, well, you know, I never get the, the opportunity to, to obey God. I never get the, you know, nothing really drastic ever happens in my life. Man. The Bible says, let your light shine so that what will happen? What, what happens if you let your light shine? What happens? People will see your good deeds and do what? Praise God in heaven. When's the last time somebody saw your good deeds and praised God in heaven? When's the last time? And I'm not talking about, you know, your, your holy and godly mother, you know, who prays for you every day and then sees that you're such an obedient child and she says, God, thank you for giving me such a wonderful child. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your friends at school, maybe your non-friends at school, just people just, you know, who, who you come in contact with all the time. When's the last time they glorified God because of your good deeds? We don't identify with Christ. So even when we do good deeds... God doesn't get the glory. God doesn't get any credit whatsoever. If you're sitting on the bus and an old lady walks in and then you stand up and have her sit down, what's the old lady thinking? Is she thinking, oh, praise God. Praise God. For no, she's thinking, oh, what a nice kid. Because all these actions that we do, we're not identifying with Christ. We love to live in anonymity. What a hard word to say. Anonymity. We love being anonymous. We love the fact that nothing challenges me to live as a Christian. We like to hide. We're like the other disciples. At least Peter was there. At least Peter was there. And so somebody challenged him, aren't you a follower? The other disciples weren't even there, so they never even faced that challenge. What I'm saying is this. Remember I, I started wearing this a couple weeks ago and you're like, what the heck are you doing wearing that big ugly cross? Yeah, it's big. Yeah, it's ugly. And it doesn't match anything. I, I don't know. It kind of matches what I wear today, I guess. Everything goes with black. So, but the reason I'm wearing this is this. I was convicted a couple of weeks ago. Man, I need to identify with Christ. And how am I going to identify with Christ? It's by wearing this. And I know it's silly. It's simple. It's like, it's so immature. It's so kindergarten, right? It's so, you know, wearing a cross around your neck does not make you a Christian. Wearing a cross around my neck does not make me a better Christian. It doesn't make me a better witness to others. But I'm wearing this because I want to identify with Christ. I want people to know, and I'm not going to get a nice little gold one or a silver one that, you know, and it's so nice and pretty, and everybody says, oh, what a cute cross. I don't want a little cute cross. I want something where if somebody sees it, they'll say, man, only a Christian would wear something like this. So there will be no mistake that I'm a Christian. I'm not going to be like one of those people, you know, with the big old signs, you know, believe in Jesus or you're going to go to hell and then go to, uh, with a megaphone in the subway, you know, and then, can you hear me? Yes, I'm right here. Can you? You're going to go to hell. I don't want to do that. But I want everybody to know that I'm a Christian. I'm a follower of Christ. I, I want to identify with God. I want to identify with Christ. And I want to constantly remind myself that there's a kind of life that I need to live. The Bible says that you can't just, oh, I love God and God loves me and let's enjoy, 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 enjoy. It's not, that love is not complete if we don't obey God, if we don't have a relationship with Him. The reason why Christians have such a hard time having any kind of influence in this world, living with any kind of power, is because we don't obey God. It's because we don't truly have a relationship with Him. We have this vague idea, this vague notion that God loves me and God accepts me and I'm satisfied with that and I'm just going to continue to live my life any old way I want to. That's not a relationship with God. I'm going to identify with Christ. This means, you know what this means? This means, like when I'm outside, I can't frown. 
And if I frown, I, must, I, I better have a really, really good reason because everybody's going to look and say, oh, hey, look at that Christian. He's unhappy. This means when I'm out there, I, I'm going to be careful about how I live my life. But you know what it also means? It means that people who come in contact with me have to deal with the fact that they're with a Christian right now. I'm going to give you a couple examples of things that happen. Uh, me and a, 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 a few teachers and I, we wore this and we went to a Takarbi restaurant. And you know how Takarbi places are, right? It's kind of kind of crowded and noisy, kind of smoky, you know, when people are there smoking and stuff. And then it was four guys. Four guys walked in, boom, give us four Takarbis, right? And the guy was taking the order. He says, all right. He takes the order and then he asks a question. What's the question? Soju no nanazeo, Right? He asked if we're going to have alcohol or not. Of course, that's, that's like the obvious question to ask. You know what this guy said? That's what he said. He saw the crosses and said, you want some Coke? You want some? What the heck? Never in my 15 years living in Korea did anybody ever ask me if I wanted any Coca-Cola with my Takarbi. It forces the other person to deal with the fact that he's looking at a Christian right now. Do you like it or not? What are you going to do? Went into a coffee shop. And the coffee shop was kind of made so that even when you walk in, the person at the counter can't see you. You have to kind of walk around this thing. But they can hear the door open. Okay? I went to a coffee shop. I was the only person. It was early in the morning. And I opened the door and the little bell went ding, 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 ding. And the lady said, Ozozeo, because, you know, I'm like the first customer, right? Ozozeo, she was so happy. And I walk in, and then as soon as she saw me, her face completely changed. She saw the cross. And she, she I mean, this friendly lady. Ozozeo, and then whoosh. And then she, I, I went, and, you know, I expect her to say, you know, what kind of coffee do you want, or what do you want, what can I do? She didn't say anything. So then I ordered my coffee and a, a sandwich. I was just going to get a coffee, but, I, you know, she hates me right now. So I'm going to get a sandwich too, okay? Okay, I ordered a coffee and a sandwich, and then I sat down. And then uh, when it was done, she prepared it and made it. She didn't even call me. She just stood there. And so it was up to me to figure out, oh, okay, it's done. So I took it, and I ate it, and then after I was done, I left. Why was she so mean to me? Did I ever do anything wrong to her? No. Did I ever hurt her or harm her anyway? No. Why was she so mean to me? It's because somewhere, sometime in her life, she was hurt by a Christian. Maybe she was hurt at church. Maybe somebody who pretended to be a Christian stole all her money. Maybe, you know, who knows? What it, but she had some bad experience or experiences with a Christian. And I, my mission, my, I knew she, she's dealing with a Christian right now. And I knew I have to somehow show her that not all Christians are like that. That true Christians don't do whatever it is that she's so upset about. And so when I ordered my coffee, I, I do what I normally do, which is I really, I smile when I order coffee, okay? I smile, and then I ordered the coffee, and then I ate the sandwich. I said, thank you for the sandwich, and then, uh, you know, and then after I'm done, oh, it was so delicious. It was really good. Thank you for the sandwich that you prepared yourself, and then, and then I, and I left. Now, did I preach the gospel to her? No. Did I bring her to church? No, she would kind of feel awkward here. And, uh, you know, but, but what, what did I do? I hope what I did was maybe in a small way, she kind of feels like, you know what, maybe Christians aren't all that bad. Maybe if the next time my friend says, hey, why don't you come to church with me, maybe she'll say, okay, maybe, because there's this guy that came in and he was really nice. Let me tell you another story. Me and, and Pastor Mike and uh, Joseph and you, we, we went to our retreat venue, our summer retreat venue. You guys don't know where it is, but it's an awesome place. It has a swimming pool. It's a secret. Great, I just told all you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Forget what I just said. We went to our retreat venue. And after we checked the place out, it was really nice. Um, you know, it had like good facilities and stuff. And then on our way home, we decided to uh, eat. And there was this nice little duck place. Oh, have you guys tried like the, 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 the duck? <laughs> it's so good. You, you cook it over fire. And, and this guy, uh, 
thankfully, we were a little bit late for lunch, and so we were the only customers there. Everybody left by the time we started eating. And the owner of the restaurant, he was just, you know, cooking for us, and, and we were sitting on the floor, and he was cooking, and then he says, this is how you do it, and then he left. And then so I'm like, you know, I'm good at cooking meat. I'm like a meat cooker. And so I, I was cooking it, and I thought I was doing a good job. He walks back, and he says, man, that's terrible. Let me do it for you. And then he starts doing it, and then we started talking, and then... He's, you know, cooking, 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 bending down, and then giving some to me, giving some to Pastor Mike and Joseph, and he's doing that, and then he's cooking some more, and then he sits down next to us. <laughs> the owner of the restaurant is sitting down next to me, cooking the, the ori, the duck, for an hour. He did the whole thing, and he kept, here you go, and here you go, oh, this is really good, and he was doing this. Now, through the conversation, we understood this guy was not a Christian. He wasn't. Uh, I don't know if this caused him to sit down. I have no idea. But one thing for sure is this. As he gave me his business card and as we were leaving, in his mind, he just had a pretty good time with a bunch of Christians who weren't crazy, who weren't weird, who were doing something good, preparing a retreat for a bunch of students. And I think I identified, I showed him that I was a Christian at that moment. I didn't, you know do anything, but I just identified with Christ. I encourage other Christians. I I got on the bus, and then as I was walking through the bus, there's a grandma sitting down. She was just kind of sitting down like this. She looked at me, and then she smiled. Why would she do that? You know? When I was younger, girls used to smile at me all the time. And, uh, and I used to think it was, you know, kind of, you know why, you know, I, I, they would smile at me and I'm the hot job. Uh, you know, uh, whatever, right? But then I realized because I'm funny looking. You know, when people smile at you and you didn't say anything funny or do anything funny, but they laugh, there's only one reason why they laugh. It was funny looking. This one time I was at a library in high school. Uh, I was at this public library and then this girl kept looking at me from a desk over there. She kept looking at me, so I kept looking at her, right? And then I had to go to the bathroom. I went to the bathroom. I came back, and then there was a note on my desk. She wrote a little note, and it said, can you introduce me to John? Oh, man, what a... (laughs) Man! (laughs) But why did this grandma smile at me? Because I was so cute? Because she was so depressed? And then she looked up, and, oh, what a cute guy walking by. And she no, it's because she saw this. I bet you she was a Christian, and I bet you she kind of felt alone. I bet you she kind of felt, you know, I don't know what she felt, but I do know that it was encouraging for her to know that there's a Christian in the bus with her. That's why I'm wearing this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to challenge you guys to do the same. And see, I had to struggle with this. Because I know some of you guys, you're going to wear this cross and and people are going to look at you and they're going to curse God. Because they're going to see how you treat people. They're going to see all the cuss words that come out of your mouth. They're going to see all the the, the nasty and mean things that you guys do. They're going to see the hypocritical things that you guys do and say. And they're going to say, you're a Christian? Get out of here. Why are you wearing the cross? They're going to do that and they're going to curse God. And so I don't know if, if everybody should be wearing this. You know, sometimes I, I don't know if I should be wearing this. I was driving, I was making a left turn, and this, also, this car was making a left turn, so we're making a left turn together. You know, you're, you have your designated lanes when you make left turns. And this guy, as he was making a left turn, and I have a cross on my car as well. My mother-in-law gave it to me. She, she, about uh, two years ago, she gave me a cross, and she said, put it in your car. And I said, okay, and I never did. And once she saw that the cross wasn't on my car, and she's all, Ooh, and she put it on, right? <laughs> so I have this huge cross on my car, and I have this. And as we were making this left turn, this car came right into my lane. Since you guys don't drive, you have no idea. it's kind of like going to Everland and being in line at Tea Express and you waited for three and a half hours and then all these kids start coming and cutting in front of you okay now you understand what I'm talking about right it's like what the yeah you 
and at that moment, you just feel oh, this, this rage coming out. And, and here's the thing. Now, if the car were an accent or an Avante or, uh, you know, a, a soul even, or uh, uh, what are those other, like, uh, those little small cars, then it would have been okay. But it's a brand new big black Ecus. <laughs> now, I'm so upset. And you know, and then I was wearing this, and I had the cross in my car. I'm not saying we have to be fake. This cross doesn't make me fake. It makes me be what I want to be. You know, the Apostle Paul, he says in the, in the Bible, he says, I want to be good. I want to do good things. I want to obey God, but the things that I want to do, I don't do. He says, I hate to sin. I hate to disobey God. I hate to do these things, but those things that I hate, I end up doing. But don't we identify? We know that. We understand that. We want to please God, but it's so hard. We want to obey God, but it's so hard. Wearing this cross doesn't make me fake. It makes me what I want to be. In that situation, I want to be calm. I want not to lash out in anger, but I want to pray for that guy. Dear God, he is driving dangerously, and he might get into a car accident someday with his reckless driving. Please help him to calm down. This is what I want to do. But without, because I'm a sinful human being, without constant reminders, I don't do it. This is a constant reminder. You know what it helps me do? You know, I drive a lot, but when I drive, nobody sees me. It makes me take public transportation more often because I want to shine God's light. I want to show the world that Christians, people who follow God, are a certain way. We're not all perfect, but we have the right motivation, we have the right desires. And so I, I want to take public transportation, you know? And I want to smile at people now. When people look at me, you know, in Korea, nobody looks at you, right? In Korea, in America, when you're walking down the street and then there's another guy walking, you know, you just go, hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? You know, it's just, what's up? And then you walk by. But in Korea, it's like as soon as you see somebody, you're like, the ground is so interesting today, right? <laughs> wow, new lines, new cracks. Uh, we do that. We, we, but now I, I, I want to, you understand what I'm saying? And I want to see a reaction. I'm a Christian. I, this is how I identify myself. You guys who go to Korean school, how do you identify yourself? You guys wear your uniforms, right? If you're involved in any kind of a club or, or any kind of an organization, you have identification cards. You have, there are ways you identify yourself with everything else in your life. You don't identify yourself with Christ, with Jesus. Now, I challenge you guys. We're going to start making these available next week, okay? Because if I say, okay, so you guys all get a cross, you're going to buy like a real expensive, pretty gold-plated, you know, whatever kind of... With, uh, no, I want a big, ugly one that doesn't match anything you wear. So that there's no mistake why you have it on. We're going to start making these available starting next week. I want you guys to pray about it. I want you guys to meditate on the Word of God. Do you want the love of God to be made complete in you through your obedience, through your relationship with God? I want you guys to think about this, pray about it, meditate on it. For those of you who are on the praise team and the media team, you guys send your quiet times to your leaders, right? Every week. Think about this. And write a response about it. For those of you in the welcoming team, you guys send your quiet times to uh, Yujin, right? Uh, she's scary. She's not even a teacher, and she expects kids to send her quiet times. Uh, yeah. Scary. Scary. She's, oh, wow. But, but, but when you do that, reflect on these things and, and, and send it, okay? Uh, for those of you guys, you know, talk about it with your teachers, about identifying with Christ, you know? Um, that the... The other title that I was going to use for this sermon was For Better or For Worse. That's what you do when you get married, right? You, you promise everybody that whether things are good or bad, I'm going to stick with this person forever. That's what for, for better or for worse means. This is what we do when we make uh, marriage vows. But we're married to Jesus. For better or for worse. 
Don't just identify with Christ when it's beneficial to you. Identify with Christ 24-7 and see how your life changes. See how much power you have in your life to overcome whatever situation you have in your life because the love of God will be made complete in us as the word of God says. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for your word today. Um, We thank you for everyone who's here today. Lord, midterms are coming up, and so we have so many things in our minds, and and it's difficult for us to focus on um, your desire for us and how we ought to live our daily lives. Um, But thank you, Lord, for causing us to be here today, um, to praise your name and to uh, listen to your word. We pray that your word would bear much fruit in our lives. You're so good to us, and you love us so much. Help us not to waste it. Help us not to ignore it, but help us to do something with it, to work with it, Lord, so that your love will be made complete. Please watch over all of us as we study and develop our relationships with our friends and our family. Uh, Help us to be the light that truly shines into this world so that your name would be glorified. Strengthen us and encourage us, please, Lord, and bless us throughout the week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.